Hello everybody and welcome to your finance helper. Today we will be focusing on the present value of a growing annuity and perpetuity. So the present value of a growing perpetuity, the it is a stream of cash flows that occur at irregular intervals and grow at a constant rate forever. And the way that we express or denote the growth rate is by using the letter G. The formula for a growing perpetuity, the present value of it, is quite similar to the present value of a standard perpetuity. The only difference is that we subtract the growth rate from the interest rates. An example of what the growth rate could actually be could be an increase in the getting cash flow. So for instance, you might assume that you invest $100 and that investment would increase by 2% every year. So there still are some assumptions that we we, uh, we take, and those are the same as for a perpetuity, that the first payment occurs at day one, and that the first payment does not include growth. Um, those are the same assumptions that we had previously. Obviously, it wasn't called growth in a perpetuity. Um, but there's also a reason why our growth rate cannot be larger or equal to the interest rate. The reason why is because if you offer the growth rate higher than the interest rate, then it would grow faster than it was discounted. So the cash flow would grow faster than it was discounted. This means that the sum would be infinite and no one would ever want to offer you that. You will not be able to buy that from any organization. For this reason, we assume that our growth rate is smaller than our interest rates. If we use a demonstration problem uh, just to show how you use the formula, so assume that you annually donate $40,000 to a graduation party and the interest rate was 8%. How much should the donation be if they need $40,000 for a graduation party every year forever? So try calculate this yourself and see what you found out. Um, the solution actually here is this is just the present value of a perpetuity. There's no growth rate right here. is not It's not shown. So we simply divide the cash flow with our interest rate this gives us an investment of $500,000. So if you invest $500,000, they will be able to have a graduation party every year forever. If you go to demonstration problem two, what if the team behind the graduation party expects the costs of the $40,000 to increase by 4% annually? How much do you need to donate then? So this is a growing perpetuity because you can see that the costs increase by 4% annually. We use the growing perpetuity formula. We take our $40,000 cash flow and divide it by the difference between our interest rates and our growth rates. This actually doubles the investment that we need to we need to we need to do uh, we need to invest. So what we actually get out here is that you need to invest $1 million if you expect the cost to increase by 4% annually and you want to have $40,000 every year for a graduation party forever. So an annuity, well a growing annuity is a stream of end growing cash flows paid at regular intervals. And again, um, the formula is quite similar to just the present value of an annuity. I will not be going through how you derive the formula. I find that a little bit um, unusual to do and you're probably not interested in that anyway. There is a reason why n uh, is not equal to infinity. This is how we define the growing annuity or an annuity in general. So since our n is finite, this formula can be used when our growth rate is higher than the interest rates. 
However, there are some other um, rules. If or n is infinite, then this formula will turn into a growing perpetuity. Or if a growth rate is equal to zero, the formula becomes a growing perpetuity as well. So if we use a demonstration problem for this as well, assume that Patrick is considering saving $8,000 per year for retirement. He expects his salary to increase, which enables him to increase his savings by 5% per year. If he earns 10% per year on his savings, how much will he have saved at age 65? So the solution for this is the present value of a growing annuity. So we use the formula, the quite long one I showed you right before. You simply have to plug in the numbers, and plugging the numbers is not that difficult. One thing that might be difficult for some people is to find out how old or the, uh, the periods. So we have used the same, um, the same problem for one of the other video videos regarding annuities where we assume that Patrick was 35 years old. This gives us a period of 30 periods. Simply add the 30 periods to the 35, this will give us 65. This is the reason why we have 30 periods. So you plug in the numbers and you will get 120,370.52 120, dollars. This is the uh, amount that the savings will be worth today. However, we need to find a future value of it. So we have to compound it using just a normal future value formula for a single cash flow. And we need to do that by 30 years. And we have an interest of 10%. So $120. Uh, 120,370.52 dollars multiplied by 1.10 to the power of 30 gives us 2,100,393.58 dollars. So thank you very much for watching your finance helper. This was a sh short video regarding how you calculate the present value of a growing perpetuity and annuity. I hope you really enjoyed it. Please comment, rate or subscribe to the video and channel if you have any questions about it. Thank you for watching.